नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स दिस इज मंदार भानुशे एंड वी आर बैक विद द नेक्स्ट वीडियो लेक्चर व्हिच इज ऑन प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू म्यूचुअल फंड्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट व्हाट इज अ म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम व्हाट इज एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एनएवी नेट एसेट वैल्यू सम सिंपल फार्मूलास रिलेटेड टू एनएवी एंड अदर थिंग्स आई होप यू हैव वाच्ड द वीडियो केयरफुली इन केस यू हैव नॉट वाच्ड द प्रीवियस वीडियो the link of the previous video is given in the description box in this video lecture we are going to solve problems related to mutual funds which is there in our syllabus of fib com mathematical and statistical techniques paper so let's begin so here we have the first problem which is there in our study material and the problem goes like this ms ragini invested rupees 94070 rupees in a mutual fund when the nav of the fund was rupees 460 with the entry load of 2.25% she received a dividend of rupees 5 per unit she later sold all units of fund with an exit load of 0.5% if again was rupees 1654 what was the nav when she sold the units as always as i say when you are solving problems in mathematics you have to just first write down what are the things given in the problem very simple and then try to use simple formulas which are there in this particular unit on mutual funds for example and solve the problem in step wise format so let us write down what are the things given to us so what is given we have the purchase price of one unit which is rupees 460 which is the nav okay and also there is an entry load as mentioned in the problem right and it is 2.25% so we have to find out what is the value of this 2.25% of 460 rupees so 2.25% of 460 and we calculate that it is 10.35 added to 460 so 470.35 is the purchase price per unit number of units purchased will be what it is the investment the lady has done the investment of 94070 rupees and the purchase of uh, the purchase price of one unit is 470 rupees so what is the total number of units she has purchased obviously it is the total investment amount divided by the purchase price so when you divide 94070 by 470.35 what you get is 200 so 200 units is what ms ragini has purchased by investing 94070 rupees now what is the dividend which she has earned so total dividend will be the number of units 200 into this is also given to us what is given to us the dividend was paid as rupees 5 per unit so we just multiply the number of units into rupees 5 to get 1000 so 1000 is the dividend which she has received so what is her gain her total gain will be the profit plus dividend it is given in the problem that let me just change the color here so it is given that the gain was rupees 1654 right and the dividend is also calculated now right so we know that the gain is given as 1654 and dividend we have already calculated is 1000 rupees so it is 1654 is equal to profit plus 1000 and we need to know what is the profit you just bring on this to the left this 1654 minus 1000 654 is the profit now the question is not over here right what is to be found out is the nav when the units were sold so while selling let the nav was rupees y per unit now this is mathematics and we need to learn these techniques of maths also because this is how we have to find out the nav so we because we don't know what is the nav and that is what we are supposed to find in this problem let it be rupees y for one unit so what is the sale price of one unit it is the nav minus the exit load so exit load also was mentioned in the problem what was the exit load given here the exit load was given to be 0.5% so 
So the sale price is NAV minus the exit load. Now NAV is rupees Y minus 0.5% of Y. So if I calculate this is 0.995. So this is very easy to calculate. You should not worry. This is Y minus 0.5% of Y. So it is Y minus 0.005. And this is 1. So, when we subtract it from it, we get 0 0.995. Now, this is a selling price of sale price of 1 unit. How many units are there? 200 units. So, when you multiply 200 with 0 0.995, you get 199Y. This is the sale price of 200 units. Now, profit, whatever the lady has earned the profit, it is the total sale price minus the total purchase price at whatever price it was purchased you remove from the sale, sale price the purchase price what should remain in your hand is the profit so we have already calculated 654 is the profit which he has earned so 654 the total sale we have calculated it is 199y and the investment the purchase price we are already aware it is 94,070 given to us what is not known is this value 199y so we this is minus here we just take it on the other side so we get if I take this 94070 on the left hand side and then just reshuffle it is 199y equal to 654 plus 94070 the total value is 94724 and uh, therefore y will be 94724 divided by 199. This value comes out to be 476. So what is 476? 476 is the NAV of the units which she sold. So at what price did she purchase? We have calculated the price in, on which she purchased was 470 and when she sold it was 476. So what is the question asking us to find? The NAV which was at the time of the sale of the units and we have finished the problem in this way. So it is simple as you can see not very difficult go step by step and we will be able to get the solution. Let us do another problem and understand these techniques better. The more you practice, you will be more comfortable in solving the problems. So, what is going to be the next problem? If a mutual fund had NAV of rupees 28 at the beginning of the year and rupees 38 towards the end of the year, find absolute change and percentage change in what? In the value of the NAV. Very simple and easy problem. Two NAV prices are given in the beginning of the year, end of the year. We have to just find the absolute change, which is the difference between the two, and we have to find the percentage change. So, in a way, it is an easy problem, but let us do it. So, what was the NAV at the beginning? 28 rupees. What was the NAV at the end of the time period? 38 rupees. What is the difference amount? The absolute change is the difference between the two. When we say absolute, we have to take the positive value. It's maybe plus or minus, but we take the plus value. So here 38 minus 28 is 10. So the absolute change is 10. And the percentage change, as we all know in the formula which was given before, absolute change divided by the NAV in the beginning multiplied by 100. So it is 10 by 10 is the absolute change which we have calculated. 28 is the NAV in the beginning multiplied by 100, 35.71% is the percentage change in the NAV. So, this is the second type of problem where we have just calculated the absolute change and the percentage change in the NAV. So, simple problem of finding the absolute and percentage change. Let us look at another problem. Again, it is related to NAV. If the NAV was rupees 72 at the end of the year, now it is at the end of the year given okay with a 12.5 percent increase so what is given here the end time period nav value and the percentage increase is given to us the question is now reverse question to find what to find the nav which is at the beginning of the year so again because this is the unknown value we have to assume some value to that so let us assume that the value of the nav at the beginning of the year was say rupees x. So we know how to find now absolute change. It's a difference between the 
both time period NABs, beginning and the end. And we also know that the percentage change is also given to us, it is 12.5 percent of the value. So, if in the beginning, if it was x rupees, so what is the 12.5 percent of x? So, 12.5 percent of x is 0.125 x. So, if it was x in the beginning and the change is now 0.125 x, so what is the new NAV? That is the NAV at the end of year, it is x plus the total increase, it is 0.125 of x. So, this is the NAV at the end of the year. Now, it is given to us what was the NAV at the end of the year, 72 rupees. So, 1.125 x is nothing but 72 rupees. So, we have this simple equation. We just divide this 1.125 on the right hand side and 72 upon 1.125 is 64 rupees. So, NAV in the initial, in the beginning of the year was 64 rupees with a 12.5 percent increase. It became 72 which is given in the problem at the end of the year. You can cross verify and check whether 12.5 percent of 64 added to 64 is 72 or not and then verify the things. So, this is again a problem in which there are only two things given uh, of the three beginning NAV, end year, end, end of the time period NAV and the percentage increase or decrease whatever it is. In these three values one is unknown, the other two are known and we have to do the problem. Let us do another problem. So, what is given in this problem? Let us read. Rohit purchased some units in open end equity fund. If you remember in the previous lecture, we talked about open ended and closed ended mutual funds. So, in this example, we are seeing this person purchasing units in the open end equity fund at rupees 16. The fund distributed interim dividend of rupees 5 per unit. And the NAV of the fund at the end of the year was 25 rupees. Find the total percentage return. This is what we have to calculate. And in the problem, it is given to us that calculate up to two decimal places. So, this is just to do the approximations. Now, again, we recollect the formula which we had seen in the previous video lecture related to the total gain. So, how do you calculate the total gain? It is the change in NAV plus the dividend which the person receives. So, what is the change in NAV? The initial NAV was 16 rupees. At the end of the year, it is 25 rupees. So, the change is 25 minus 16. And what is the dividend given? Dividend is rupees 5. So, we just add 5 to that. This gives you 14 as the total gain. Now, we have to find the percentage gain. So, what is the percentage gain? Percentage gain formula is also very simple. Total gain divided by the NAV which was there in the beginning. So, the total gain here is we know 14 rupees we have calculated here and the NAV we know it was 16. So, 14 upon 16 into 100 it is 87.5 percent. So, this is the percentage gain. Again, a very simple problem with the data if you read it properly and write it down one below each other when you are solving the problems you should be able to get the answers easily. And as I always say more practice makes you perfect in solving mathematical problems. Because the formulas are universal and they are going to stay there, they are not going to change. What is going to only change is the data which is given to you, something which is unknown and the rest of the things are known to us. Let us look at the next problem. Mr. Hosur purchased some units in again open ended mutual fund at rupees 30 and its NAV after 18 months is rupees 45. So, we have the NAV at the beginning of the year, at the end of you can say year or a time period. And the question here is to find the annualized change in NAV as a percentage. So, what is given? Let us write down change in NAV for 18 months. So, it is this 45 minus 30, that is 15. And once the change in NAV is there, you have to just divide it by the NAV in the beginning. And then, because it is annualized, you have to take 365 days the number of months etc everything into picture and we want in percentage so we have this 100 also here so change in nav is 15 divided by the nav at the beginning which is 30 and 12 divided by the number of months is 18 into 100 so the answer is 33.33 percentage so this is simply calculated analyzed change 
so friends in this video lecture we have seen how to solve problems related to mutual funds which is basically about nav uh, absolute change percentage return and simple simple things put in the formula and you can solve the problems so we have just seen some glimpse of problem solving in mutual funds in the next video lecture we are going to do something which is very much talked about or whenever people talk about investment uh, in terms of shares mutual funds a word which is very commonly talked about is sip systematic investment planning so in the next video lecture we'll talk about sips and some problems related to sips which is there in our syllabus so i hope all of you are loving these video lectures please like our youtube channel subscribe to the youtube channel and share the videos which you have watched also put your comments and let us know your feedback and suggestions for further video lectures in not only mathematical and statistical techniques but other papers too let us see in the next video lecture about sips systematic investment plans till that time thank you for watching namaste